Greetings, dear lighted ones. This is Joanna from Universal Love and Light Wisdom. Thank you so much for tuning in um, and connecting with us today. Thank you so much. And we're going to, um, we've already called in the teams, so know that you are higher selves and your souls and your celestial teams are with you for any activations, healings, or any um, um, movement of energy that needs to be done. And we will be probably playing with some sound and song because it's one of my passions. But today we wanted to bring forward um, an intention for Ascension um, offerings to perhaps have us muse about and think about um, um, the ego <laughs> um, a little bit differently that I've, I've come to understand um, a different interpretation of what I've known ego to be and what we've, we've termed and defined as negative ego. Um, and in the, in the journey that um, I've had in my awakening, in my ascension, and um, how I've gone through the traversing of the various dimensional energies and frequencies and experiences, um, most often than not, um, not really understanding the grander plan and the grander scheme of why I was going through what I was going through, um, in the in the healing of the Akash and the soul itself, the soul remembrance and calling it in for reunification and honoring all that I was as a divine soul being. We always see things after the fact when you know, when we're awakening and moving through the release and the integration that's required. Um, but I wanted to bring it forward because um, it allowed me to um, release some of the, the the densities and the stories that we have as a collective about ego. Um, and so my intention is that we we offer up, um, as we've, we've offered in many of our years of, of offerings, it's just higher vibrational understandings of who we are. It's very complex and elegant beings of light. Um, we're, we're designed um, as, as these beautiful cosmic energies and entities of, of, of faceted weavings. Um, and so to understand more um, of who we are as a dimensional, a multidimensional um, energy essence, that we're interwoven with templates and we're interwoven with um, love and light. And um, it can help us perhaps in demystifying, um, you know, some of the, the <clears throat> um, some of the s stories or the teachings or um, just our ways of always understanding information because many of us know that we're at a point in time now where we're entering into um, a fifth dimensional frequency in which we get to rewrite everything. We get to rewrite it. And we really do have that beautiful positive offering that we each come forward with. And there's no one set program or ideology that will be right. It will be everybody's um, offering to come forward. And this is my um, personal experience from not only my soul's journey, but the many um, lifetimes that I've pulled together for this um, divine um, celebration um, of this earthly lifetime, which is important um, because all of us have, um, you know, uh, this lifetime is very, very key. And, you know, it's very special. My kitty cat climbing on the table again around the candle. I don't know why he likes candles. <laughs> oh, kitty cats. And um, threw me off my game there. Oh, yeah, ego. <laughs> I gotta love animals, right? Um, and so, um, this is what we have to, to offer these new energies and, and, you know, to let go of all of what we've been taught and told, you know, and, and how we can, um, and I, I see, and I've had these really exciting visions in which, you know, um, you know, the medicine, the, the field of medicine and the field of um, um, psychiatry and psychology coming together with, um, with energy and truly rewriting it, the consciousness of science, the consciousness of us as multidimensional spirited beings and human bodies. And we really need to look at things in a new way and, and, and propose things in a new way and muse things and, and ponder things in a different way. Because as we do, we get to release those old stories that we thought that um, held us in you know, a sense of captivity. I'm just gonna pull this up because we just, <clears throat> having your little journey around my table. <laughs> Too funny. <sighs> and so, um, 
and this is what really made me feel a little bit, um, you know, I could feel the shifts in my, in my field and, and, you know, letting go of what, you know, we've defined in the, in the, you know, energy realm in the metaphysic realm, because it's what we knew. And we've, we've just been using other people's terms and words and terminologies and it's not wrong. Um, but there are perhaps there are things that are far grander and far more intricate and far more elegant. Um, that we can raise our vibration on who we are as multidimensional beings of spirit and body and vessels of God and um, release some of those um, <clears throat> energies that hold us to certain um, experiences or definitions. And so what I've, um, it, you know, in my story, and many of you that know, um, um, I, I, I've come here as a crystalline child, um, crystalline energy vibrations in my chakras and my water bodies. Um, not knowing this obviously until I was awakened and you know moving through my experiences, um, but came here at um, a fairly high frequency, um, and moving into the um, environmental experiences that I was um, was quite um, challenging for me. Um, the densities and the the struggles and the, the challenges that I found um, my specific soul story in, and so when I was about five. Um, I had an experience with the Pleiadians and they came to visit and um, they, yes, they um, adjusted my heart chakra so that what I was sensing and feeling and receiving would be turned down. And I wouldn't, um, you know, to benefit the, my life experience and my body because it would have been very traumatic if I had continued at that frequency. Um, but I had always felt and known and it was tuning into things that most people weren't. Um, and I knew that. Um, and I, it can cause me lots of confusion for my whole life. And I, I pretty much ran from who I was feeling that I didn't fit. And this will be part of our conversation today about the children understanding and how we can re shift the paradigm potential on, um, the collective as a family, um, for the children. Um, because it's those first, um, experiences of individuation, um, that we, that we move through and, and, Part of this teaching will be, most of it will be um, a, re, a redefining and a new paradigm thought of the psyche. And, um, uh, and I've um, experienced, um, you know, like many, many people do, and why our, um, our earth experience in the 3D was as it was as separated. Because some of those first individuated experiences were... Um, how the child views itself within the environment and all others and then the environment shaping it as to what's right or wrong what's accepted what's not accepted and then going into the socioeconomic environment um, of schooling and education and, and religion and all of those things that shape who we become um, as a as a person <clears throat> but it's in these experiences that um, um, really um, depress and suppress those um, emotional body experiences, the, the, the divine multidimensional body experiences that we're all healing, that we've all been healing for many years. But we need to bring it to the forefront and begin musing about in new ways um, so that we recognize how, how um, pivotal these early um, experiences are to the psyche, to the multidimensional bodies and the experience throughout life. And how every being um, on the planet moves through its own healing of those earliest experiences of, of, um, of who we truly are as spirit, as divine, unique, creative, um, um, special, free, liberated, anything that is in the alignment of the, the Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness being the highest vibrational experience, the Adam Kadmon body. So redefining um, those in alignment with the Christic experience and looking at it from the earliest experiences that every child has in perceiving itself within the world and those around it. And those earliest experiences, if not in alignment, will go through its own unique soul journey to heal what it's come to heal within its soul blueprint. And so my specific story, my soul blueprint is that I, I had these experiences to heal. And we talked about it in a few other energies or a few other videos before about the 12 emotional um, wounds that I had come to heal and the emotional body healing. Um, and that emotional body healing was um, directly related to some of the earthly experiences here in my um, earliest childhood experience and all throughout life about not fitting in, about suppressing the emotional body, suppressing what we felt and what we were told should feel. 
um, we're, we're conditioned and we're controlled in every way about how we should feel in certain situations, if we're hurt or disappointed or angry or frustrated, whatever the emotion is. And we're, we're shaped by those around us and what they were brought up in and the environment and the socioeconomic and the school and so on. But it's important to know that, that um, those experiences are what, what create, and this is the, the, the underpinning of this entire video, we'll say it right now, is the underpinning of this entire video, is um, the psyche, I've, I've come to understand the ego as part of the psyche template. The psyche template, because we're multidimensional beings and we are spheres, of layers and threads and weavings of, of essence, of form, of matter, of experience. And all that we are as a multidimensional being, um, that psyche template is a template that we wear, that we are, that is us, from all of the experiences from our Akash that we've come in this particular lifetime to heal third to fifth dimensional wounds of the soul so that we can move into this fifth dimensional experience of being where we will know everything, we will remember everything, we will know all of our timelines. And why it's been somewhat traumatic, um, or, or can be, depending on what you've experienced as a soul, the other timelines to come in and heal. And I'm threading this in because um, we can look at it and perceive, and this is what's really exciting, is that we can take these new understandings of psyche templates, understand them, and, and begin to muse about even the children born now. And how can we begin to become aware of and share awareness and share awakening in how those earliest experiences of um, misalignment or um, um, limiting beliefs and limiting um, experiences from the social environment, from the, um, from the environment of all that we are as a collective, um, shape, the, shape the children somewhat. Now there's so many, you know, crystalline children being born that some of those social experiences are not hampering the soul's journey, but they do, they, they do in some way. Um, and we all come into it with our soul agreement, knowing that we're here to heal those things. So, I mean, it's all a divine orchestration. It's all a divine plan. But with what I've under, um, with what I've experienced, um, um, the psyche template is that, um, just imagine this beautiful golden sphere that we are and we have these weavings and, and um, um, when you're moving through your, your soul's experience and you're moving through um, the awakening, the understanding to new information, the understanding to who you are as a being and what, what all is around you and you go into the integration process, integrating new beliefs, integrating new um, behaviors, integrating new experiences, your soul is expanding, your light body is expanding. And your, your soul, your higher self says, okay, they're, they're ready for this, this healing of the soul fragment. And that will be turned on. That experience will be turned on in the template, the codes. So in your soul planning before you get here, you and your soul team, your oversoul team, your oversoul of oversoul teams get together and they plan what are some really important life themes that we want to move through? What are some soul experiences you want to move through? What are the healings of your soul, of the soul of all that you are, that you'd like to come and experience and, and transcend? And these are codes, the codes of experience. And this is what we want to redefine, perhaps, and muse about, offer the ego as a part of the psyche template. The ego doesn't know anything outside of the experience. It, it doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't know or understand that what and who you are now is incapable of handling and transcending whatever that ego is here to remind you and to heal and transcend. For example, um, persecution. I've gone through many experiences throughout my entire enlightenment and why I experienced what I did when I was younger of um, owning my own light, standing in my power, um, shining forth who I am, speaking my truth, um, because of the many, many um, lifetimes I've had of persecution. So the ego, um, psyche template, will code those experiences of negativity, those experiences of not fitting in, those experiences of unaccepted um, um, pain, trauma, death, whatever it might be. 
that experience is that code that will what will that will be um, encoded in the psyche template it's like a, a transparent field of information but that information is only that experience it doesn't remember anything else around it that it was a different time period that it was different family different socioeconomic it would i mean there's so many other variable factors and we all know that but um, what I was experiencing is that the self-sabotage, because to go forward and express fully all that I am, in many experiences, I was just, I was, my energy was just so big. And so, um, you know, it was as many experienced, they, they feel as if they didn't fit or they spoke their truth and they, they felt at the very earliest of age that it wasn't okay. Or they were told how to think and how to talk and how to react and how to emote experiences. So it's very controlled and very um, subjugated. And so the psyche template of that fear, you know, 10 lifetimes of being persecuted as an energy healer, energy worker, or speaker, or talker, whatever you might call it, or whatever your expression might be, that experience doesn't know anything other than that, that, that traumatic death or that traumatic experience or whatever it was. So that when that gets turned on to be healed, the mind, the physical mind, goes through, well, I've been through this. I've, I've, why, why do I keep creating these self-sabotage when I already know that I'm at the level now where I can transcend it? I know in consciously and cognitively, I understand I'm spirit. I understand I'm one with God. I understand this. So, but the mind and the ego, psyche, are not in cohesion. And this is where, in some of our earlier teachings, um, we suggested that the ego to surrender to the grander soul self because the ego will then start feeding triggers to the mind to then create thought patterns of negativity and those thought patterns then begin to create thought forms and so on. Um, and so it's just a triggering mechanism. But what we as masters are now here to create is to say, I know that I'm going to surrender because I am the master of my consciousness, all that I am, all that I am. I have the power to say, I'm going to surrender into this experience of the divine soul that I am because the soul and the spirit and the power of love of source creator that you are, you are source is far more um, enveloping of all that's going on and understands the whole process the, the psyche doesn't. The psyche is that template of experience. That's it. It feels very real and it feels very tangible because those psyche experiences is what turns on those Akashic records where you see glimpses and peaks of the timelines and then that, that gets you all thrown off and or gets you feeling those experiences. Well, I'm not sure why I'm going through this because I thought I dealt with that already, you know. But this is how deep and rich the soul is. This is how wide the soul is in its experience. And those templates are those coded experiences at even the earliest of ages. And we hear the children, you know, when they're, when they're you know, in school, you know, um, and, and their social experiences and their social upbringings, they go through certain experiences and they, the first, one of the first experiences that they have or the conversations that they have um, with you will be that um, their their um, their first pers um, their first um, acknowledgement their first awareness of where they're not fitting or where they're not as like others or where they're not um, talking like others or feeling like others or they recognize things that others are not recognizing and those are the conversations where they come to you in um, in guidance. You know, this was said to me today, and this is what I think. What do you think? And this is, or this is what was said to me, but I didn't feel right about that. Or, so these are the conversations and these are the experiences through which, and this is what's really important, is that we can, re, we can reshape through the, through the wave that is time in this now moment. We can reshape those, those very pivotal, um, multidimensional, um, emotional imprints to be more positive to allow them their freedom their liberation their um, their sovereignty their Christhood their um, their innate oneness with source to weave back into 
so that they can then go and create the psyche templates that actually serve them and not have it be um, victimization um, because they're not in cohesion with the mass. They're not in um, equal with the mass because many of them already know that they've come here in that, <laughs> you know, and, and for some, there, there'll be, there's many children that, that this doesn't affect, you know, because they've just come here with such a powerful blueprint to transcend those. But there will be some aspects where their psyche template will have to turn on to transcend something because we all have them. That's how we evolve. <laughs> we don't come here with nothing to do. You know, we, we come here as a school of consciousness. Each and every one of us is a school of consciousness of source. And those psyche templates are filled with experiences of all of all that we are as a soul. Every, because all timelines are now. So as you expand, the eternal now of you, the infinite now of you can also expand and heal and bring in and really expand consciousness to the infinite in the eternal because we are, we're source. But those templates are just like transparent fields of codes. And those codes are those experiences. Even the earliest experience, even in the womb, those experiences where you were, um, you know, many of, I've had womb experiences where I remember being in the womb. And those psyche experiences are, are coded. And then they, um, what the psyche, um, psychic templates then reveal is the interweaving on how it's playing with the all of you because that psyche template affects the cells, that experience affects the cells. It affects the health of your body. It affects the health of your mind. Um, the mental um, balance, the physical balance. Um, and so when those experiences occur, you know, the, the negative, we've called it negative ego because it creates with us those negative thought forms and then the negative behaviors that, that suppresses us into experiencing um, the being that we're truly come here to be, which is the divine sovereign Christed essence, which is completely free and liberated to co-create in whatever way we so choose. Each of us are here to experience our ultimate free, liberated experience as source. We're here to create sovereignty. We're here to create through our sovereignty. We're here to create through our own creativity and has nothing um, in, 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 in comparison to anybody else. And this is what the children, even at the earliest of age, we've all experienced it at the earliest of age, that psyche experience is coded. It's in us. And we can begin to reshape that in allowing the understanding that each and every one of us are here to experience the full liberated essence of who we are as source beings, uniquely, sovereignly, creatively, um, auspiciously, specially, um, you know, so in our, each in our own precious way. And this is the sacredness. And so a very long introduction and a, and a brief ex experience of, you know, how I've experienced um, the multidimensional journey that I've taken and why we can bring it forward into heightened experiences, if we so choose, to, re to bring a new platform of awareness and awakening um, so that we can allow the uniqueness and the specialness of every child and every human being to be brought into a new potential so that those psyche imprints can be healed more quickly. Um, and what I've learned to understand too is that psyche template can be healed through sound and tone and color again, because there are all the higher dimensional um, frequencies that, um, that step over um, those uh, codes. And so as we're spiraling through time, and if that psyche experience is not healed within the soul, that template code is not healed, then that, cur that, that experience of time will continue to bring it up. And as we accelerate, they will get more and more bumpy, you know, because it wants to be healed. And, and we're accelerating and it, it must be healed. And so... Um, and we can bring those into a higher perspective of understanding that they're codes of experience, and that's it. They're painful experiences, they're traumatic experiences, they're powerful experiences. They can be also very liberating too, um, because when we understand that that's our soul and we're embracing it, we're, we're loving ourselves and we're honoring that experience, that experience projects us and catalyzes us to a new vibrational potential. And so this is why um, 
why my title for today's um, offering is sacredness versus sacrifice. And we say sacrifice because we take the we take the social experience from even our earliest age, as we've talked about before, about the most earliest um, psyche experience that one has of individuation and who it is within the environment and, and with others. And those experiences can can be perceived from each individual from a different perspective, and it's meant to. One can perceive the same experience as joyful and liberating, and the other one can perceive it as um, judgmental and harming. So this is what's so dynamic about evolution and what's so um, so profound and why we can experience and examine it in new ways. Um, but this, the sacrifice is that, you know, even at the earliest of ages, children have, um, for many, many eons, have been suppressed in the emotional body. They're told how to behave and how to act and how to, to um, suppress the emotions that they're innately meant to express. And this is why there's the, the healing and um, the imbalances are what they are in our, our socioeconomic world and experience. Um, they're, you know, whether it's um, um, holding back pain, not showing pain, not showing sensitivity, not showing their awareness to others, um, pain, empaths. Um, and, and all of those experiences, there's so many different experiences that we move through imbalancing who we are as a multidimensional being that we can reshift and create a new paradigm of potential for in understanding that the multidimensional body, understanding the psyche templates and how the psyche templates affect the balance and centeredness of the multidimensional bodies. And those, those experiences shape, you know, who we are and how we experience life. We experience life as fully liberated and, and expressive and, and jubilant to be who we are and celebrating who we are. Or we continue to suppress how we feel and how we co-create in the world because of our fears of not fitting in or not uh, allowing our emotions to come free and flow freely um, and, and with wellness and health and, and in a manner that is honoring who they are as source. And this is what we're going to be getting to in the future is how do we express and, and move through our emotional experiences in honor of being sacred? Because the way that we've, we've experienced through separation and all of the lower vibrational frequencies is that it's been through subjugation. We've been taught and told how to think and act and express and, um, and fit in the environment that we were, we were born within and we're co-creating within. And many of us are now here to shift that and bring it up to a new frequency of potential. Um, because the subjugation is, again, we said in our other videos, is they're so very subtle, but they, it's for us to be aware and recognize it so that we can shift it and allow the experience of how each person moves through their emotional journey as source to be as sovereign and beautiful and sacred as it is. The sacrifice part is, what we are what we experience in our healing you know in in all of those experiences that we only you know as a parent you we do the best that we can based on what we know what we've experienced what we've educated ourselves on and who we are as a person what they've come to learn from us and what we learn from them you know our children but in every experience there's there's some form of wanting our children to have the best and, and do the best and we want the best for them and sometimes we we put in so much effort that there's a lot of control there and there's very little sovereignty so we're shifting those understandings and awakenings very subtly but it's required because those um suppress the innate creativity and the fluidity of source of source being in any in any way but to set boundaries in a safe way so that they're understanding the rules and they're understanding the consequences, they're understanding those basic foundational, you know, benevolent experiences, but to allow them the emotional um, freedom, the emotional capability, the emotional skill, the emotional wellness and, and health to know that they are a full package experience of source and it's unique and special, that it's unique and divine that it's unique and powerful when they're in tune 
with allowing their emotional body to be freely expressed in um, a way that is comfortable and creative for them. Um, and it's up to um, our new way of um, offering to offer different ways of creative and emotional um, um, rebalancing. You know, how, because every child will want to express their, their emotions differently and, and how they know themselves. And so that will be part of our future um, learning and healing as in light communities, in these higher dimensional light communities, is how can we get together as a community? Because all of, we're, so, we're, we're all parents, we're all moving through the shifts and the changes and the transitions that we all move through in Ascension. And um, these light communities can, can work together, you know, come together and work together so that the children have, you know, you know in, in many of the higher dimensional um, planetary experiences, um, like the Arcturians, um, if, if there's anyone being that's moving through something that's traumatic or um, 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 hindering their soul's experience, that soul's experience affects the all. And so the elders of the community come together and they immediately partake in whatever that, that soul needs for healing. And so this is how I, I see the, the light communities and the future is working, is that we're coming together as, as light communities and saying that we don't have all the answers yet, but we want to work together. We want to work together to bring heightened experience and heightened um, exploration and co-creation and expression um, for our reality. No birds here. <laughs> so much magic coming in. Um, I think that's a blue jay. The blue jays are beautiful messengers of heaven. Thank you. Um, um, so, how can we um, how can we bring this community together and know that there's the community of the healers and the elders that come together for um, listening, compassion, support, um, food care, you know, higher dimensional food care, um, higher dimensional and quality food. Um, many of the additives and, and I mean there's so much that we take in that's not of benevolence to our light body <laughs> and we all know that um, but this is where communities of light will help um, help the the families that truly are willing to explore new ways of existing and, and co-creating in a benevolent way um, in which there's there's healers sound healers and 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 um, light language and um, sacred play where the children and the communities collect so that they're freely expressing and allowing themselves to explore their creativity and their multidimensional experience as source in unique and different ways. But we first must begin to um, create greater awareness and let go of um, all that we've known and we can use it as the foundation of who we have been as humans and pull the best of what we've, what we've learned and what we've created as texts and learnings and teachings, but to open up to the multidimensional, infinite, um, all that we are, we store all of the information in every nucleus of who we are. We store the information of the universe within every nucleus. Um, it's a, information and wisdom is within us. And so we can take what we've, all, what we've always learned and done, and we can perhaps expand it into this open arena of potentiality that we are universal beings of light. How may we go about perceiving and experiencing the flow of new time, the new now, so that we're opening into the potential that these psyche templates can be imprinted and coded with positive experiences of open creative sovereignty? And there's many things we need to think about. There's many things we need to ponder and wonder. Um, but this is, this is the, the, the great experience of these new fifth dimensional um, consciousness templates that we're all co-creating, is to let go of those definitions that held us in certain stories, um, the, the limitation and the power that we thought the negative ego had. The negative ego doesn't know anything outside of the experience of what that's here to heal. That's it. That traumatic experience that I have experienced and why I said those templates are connected with the whole multidimensional body 
because there's there has been certain um, you know persecutions that I've remembered and my body remembers I can feel the pain in my body so it's a frequency that that moves throughout your entire multi-dimensional system their codes and so we need to um, allow ourselves <laughs> the potentiality that these psyche codes and the healing are it's a whole it's a whole um, um, perspective you know and when when children are in their world moving through their experience for us to offer the empowerment the inspiration and the upliftment that it's okay to show your pain that's how the body moves itself through its healing the body knows what it's doing the body creates sounds and the body immediately goes into healing when it when it's injured but in many of our cultures in many of the the histories that we've had you know especially with boys they've they've had these ideologies to suppress pain they're not meant to feel pain or show pain and that immediately goes into the psyche template that immediately goes into suppressing the body and its healing that immediately goes into the mental field of what it thinks it needs to behave and to act like to be accepted to be honored in its society it's not safe to show pain it's not safe to be sensitive it's not safe to be empathically aware of others pain or concern for others so these are all these these very early on um, experiences their experiences and we want to we want to make sure that that is um, it's 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 profound and expansive as I've seen it and and how it feels in healing and how it feels in its release but that experience doesn't know itself outside that experience and that's what's important <laughs> Because oftentimes, you know, as parents and as healers and as people going through their own pain, you know, we often belittle and berate ourselves, which slows down the healing, which slows down the transcending of it. Because you think, why am I not already through this or over this? That experience only knows that experience. It doesn't have any other understanding of what it thinks it's doing to you. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it's not, it's not the mind of the experience of what you're going through it's only that trigger to say i'm ready to be healed now it doesn't know anything else other than heal my pain however it's linked to everything else and that's why the mind gets well i should be over this i you know and those all those comments that actually slow the process down because you're you're it's resistance it's not opening into oh, okay oh, i'm healing that experience my psyche templates being healed i can feel it and then it goes into that the cells in the mental body and so um you know it's it's quite exciting that we get to um and and i think part of um, my experience and the the, the 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 beauty that i've come here and i'm embracing who i am and this is why sacredness versus sacrifice is how we've we've moved through our limitation and density is we've sacrificed the the experience of who we are as Christic beings of light to allow ourselves to be free in our emotional experience and expression and exploration a source our mental exploration expression and experience a source our etheric and our physical expression exploration and experience a source we've sacrificed those experiences and it's come to great harm in who we are and who we've allowed ourselves to be We've held ourselves back in many experiences. Um, I know I, I'm speaking from my specific experience. I've held myself back in so many moments of my life. You know, I'm 50 and I've held myself back in so many moments and my teams and God and the mother father are so, they're just constantly reminding me. This is your, like Archangel Michael came to me the other morning and you know, we were looking out onto the, the snow and he was showing me that the, each and every snowflake and crystal is uniquely source, designed by source. And each unique individual on the planet is that of itself as well. And so this is your world. How do you want to create it? Because you are the universe creating the only experience that you're, you're moving through right now. You are the universe creating itself. And this is how powerfully divine we are to heal our bodies, to understand that those codes are my codes and I can shift them and I can change them, I can heal them. 
through compassion, through love, and through forgiveness, um, through the through the shifting of perspective. I get that 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 experience is only that lifetime that's here to be healed, and I'm going to give compassion to it. I'm not. It's not going to get to that point where it's going to affect everything that I am, because if that experience doesn't get healed, it will begin to come back and ping on everything else that you are moving through, because it it wants its attention. You know that we've called it the inner child. And, and we can still call it the inner child. It's not wrong. Um, because many of these experiences in the psyche template that we're here to heal, they come to us through our childhood experiences because that's where we first initiate and acknowledge where we don't fit, where we don't belong, how our emotions are not valued, how our feelings and expressions are not valued. Um, and so we're here to shift the paradigm and create those fifth dimensional portals that we can walk into and say, you know what, how you experience your life and your reality of life, your perspective of life, that's uniquely yours. I, I want to give that to you. I want to honor that. I honor you in the most high. You are a divine source essence. How you experience, explore, and express yourself as source is totally you and God. That's you and source. Mother, Father, Great Spirit of the Sky, that's you. And give them that empowerment back. Gift it to them. You and God. You talk with God. How do you want to explore and express what you're, what you're doing today? Give them that empowerment to say, I, I'm owning my feelings. I'm owning this experience. And it's okay that I feel pain. Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> you know, I'm not walking around pretending it hurt. It hurt. You give it a few seconds and you move on. The body immediately heals. If you're suppressing any of that pain, if you're depressing anything that you're feeling through emotionally, um, many, many, um, you know, the illnesses that, and the imbalances that many are moving through are because of the suppression and the depression of the emotional expression of who we were, the creative expression from who we were, not allowed or being able or um, feeling as if we had that freedom or it was okay to express who we were, or um, the communication that was so important to so many that didn't, that didn't happen, that expressive one-on-one -on -one expression of heart and intimacy it didn't happen and didn't occur and those suppressed emotional and intimate um, affectionate experiences were never had and those are healing from that psyche template the affection and the intimacy was never there so how do i know what love is how do i create what love is how do i know what is really great affection that's that's true sacred and what do we sacrifice and and what do we sacrifice and how does it reflect in, in how we are as a society collective and a community of light? We're sacrificing when we're not creating and allowing the sacredness. That's where we're healing. <laughs> so it's been, um, you know, it's been, um, you know, it's been quite an amazing ride for the last 10 months for me because all of these experiences um, I've, I've come here as that, that with those heightened um, experiences in my, my DNA and my genetics, my chakras and things like that. And the Pleiades um, turned down my heart chakra. Um, but um, I understand the last 10 months, I, I was able to, um, with, the, with the soul healing that I've been moving through, many of the soul fragments I've been moving through, um, some of them are not comfortable. Um, having, um, because again, they were in, in experiences that were far more separative than we're experiencing now. We, we're, we're at an enlightened state right now, you know, and this is what we have to put into perspective. Sometimes I, I, you know, what we see in the world and what we hear in the world and what we're moving through, we sometimes put labels and judgments on them that confine and even suppress the experience of healing um, and embracing, you know, create it all as sacred. Start at sacred. <laughs> And see what happens, you know. Start at that experience of being source sacredness, and allow it to transcend into something beautiful. Because through the last ten months, um, I knew it to a certain experience, um, and and this is where I've <clears throat> I've allowed myself great humility and reverence for our our human journey moving through this awakening process, and to understand the. The, the, the varied experiences and depths of the human experience and what we allow ourselves to feel subjugated within the density and the fear 
um, and how fear is just so crippling, you know, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's within my psyche template all over the place for me to heal just because of the number of lifetimes that I've had. <laughs> and I say that with great laughter now. Really, I do. <laughs> you know, um, and I'm, I can find, you know, I, I'm at that, um, I'm at that, that open hearted place and, and source. Thank, I just thank God for God. The infinite support and the infinite love, the infinite, the the infinite um, divine um, help and assistance that we have. You know, in every moment that I've moved through things that I've never moved through before, and and calling help in, not even knowing how to heal it, but just calling that help in, and it's it shifted and it's moved. And that's the power we have as source over our whole consciousness to know that if there's something in that psyche template that just feels or comes up as a memory or comes up as an experience that's so hard to co-create or transcend, um, you can ask for help, call in help. Say, I'm, I'm not sure how to get to the healing space, but I surrender all that this is into higher hands. My heart really just wants to love and, and feel balance and feel serenity and peace show me the way and those prayers of surrender those prayers of purity um, of loving yourself and forgiving yourself and, and allowing that compassion to take over is those those beautiful hands of god that come in um, and sacredly reshape everything the sacredly you know the the dna and the cells and the body your healing teams are all working together um, and it's such a beautiful experience and a beautiful um, transcension and why you know in as we've talked about the serpent energy and the serpent energy swallowing its own um, swallowing itself whole is that when you get through those phases of, of of surrender thinking that you have to handle it all or do it all yourself or and this is why these communities of light will be so important um, the sacredness of source living through each and every one of us in communities amplifies and magnifies what we're able to co-create and and heal and we can, we can begin, you know, we can begin by gathering in small groups and we can begin by gathering and connecting and saying, I'm, I'm not sure what we're here to do, but I'm really excited. You know, how may we begin, you know, and, and just connect with one another, you know. So I see within the next year, um, you know, hope my intention is to begin like communities that we put, you know, an illustration up to help inspire, um, you know, Musing and, and, you know, collaborating in different ways um, for the healing of the human experience that's so very needed um, for, for all of us, you know, for all of our children to be as free and liberated as Christed beings that they've come to be and to share with us and show us um, their exploration and experience and expression of who they are as divine source beings, to be free from fear, you know. Um, and that's what the fifth dimensional experience will be. Um, the work and the um, the perseverance and the devotion and the commitment that we've had through all of our pains and through all of our Akashic healing. Um, we're not always going to know the answers, but we've got the heavens and all of the divine councils and the, the, the divine councils of light and all of source um, legions assisting us in co-creating this fifth dimension. Um, and the potentialities that we all have as a beautiful collective. And there are epiphanies that we each come to through our journeys, through our own unique journeys. And this is why that unique, sovereign, creative expression and exploration of who we are as divine source beings, uniquely sovereign, free, is so important. Because that sovereignty and that freedom comes to us as our own epiphanies in our own journeys to then again explore and evolve even further and deeper and wider. And this is the magic and the essence and the majesty that is source through us. The evolution lives through us. The magic lives through us. The, the ecstasy lives through us. You know, and this is what's really exciting. We get to begin, you know, muse and ponder. How can we, re how can we open into a new platform that's far more expansive than we've been working with? You know, so that we look at healing and we look at the exploration of who we are in a more expansive manner. You know, 
not negating or saying that any of it is wrong, but opening it up into that was a one gateway. Let's open a new gateway and we'll take the best of what we've got with these new understandings about who we truly are within the universe and how we can work with the consciousness of the planet, how we can work with the healing and the modalities of the planet with source as us. We are source consciousness. The fields of us are source. Now that we know that we can work with all of these templates, we can work with our bodies, we can work with ourselves, we can work with whatever it is we want to work with as a community and we can be there in support and kindness and caring and sharing with others. And these are the fifth dimensional vibrations that we're sending out there. We're co-creating it right now as we speak. Um, and so those are just some of the experiences that I had as sacredness versus sacrifice and how we can look at it in our everyday life, allowing those around us and ourselves the exploration and experience and expression of who we are as individuals and unique sovereign beings. Um, what's important for you to express and experience and explore and that's why that was daily self-care look at the multi-dimensional bodies and allow yourself you know what is it that my body needs from me right now um, what is it that my mind needs what is it that my my soul really craves for do i want to sing in nature do i want to just go and sit in nature i want to be in the oceans for you know you know swimming with the swimming with all the the ocean animals and being part of that oceanic um, vibration it's totally different than the forest vibration um, and so allow these explorations and these experiences to be sacred start at sacredness um, and, and it opens up the vibration of all that you are in brand new and dynamic and benevolent ways so that you begin to think about things oh yeah I feel that in my field I just felt that shift and then it doesn't have to be connected with paradigms that are outdated um, that allow us to continue to fall back into those those limiting vibrations of um, limitation or subjugation and that we're all here to heal um, so we hope that that's been um, you know an, an eye and a heart and a soul opening um, for us all to ponder and muse and, and feel the, the feel the confidence and the empowerment within you to explore all that you are with source source I'd love to explore my soul today in a deep and serendipitous way show me the way um, and, and really have those soft and loving communions and sources with you. And you can feel the voice of source living through you as this beautiful wave of consciousness, of love, just bringing beautiful miracles in and call miracles in and work with your fields. Um, we're going to start our classes soon, um, working with the fields and calling those experiences and begin to feel the fields and the, the particles and the weaving that you are shift and change through your own intention, through your own calling it in um, and allowing yourself to be the benevolent being of love and light that you are. Um, and for us to set that example for these new templates for the children and for them to walk through it and show us new templates, you know, and that's what's going to be really exciting. <laughs>